Hello everyone, we are back with another Scooby-Doo item. Okay, um, again, I wanted to review the Scooby-Doo stuff when I found it, because some of the most popular videos was the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine, so people love their Scooby-Doo. This is the Revel Build and Play. It's pre-painted, it's snapped together model kit. Okay, it comes with Scooby, Velma, and Shaggy. The van didn't come with Shaggy or Velma, which was kind of sad, but if you bought that biplane, you get them both. Okay, and I did find it at a discount store, so I don't know how easy this is going to be to find in the future. Paid 10 bucks for it. Same with the Mystery Machine. All right, so if we look at the back, you know, it's built together, and you can put stickers on it, and then you get to play with it. And zoinks, there's the Mystery Machine. Now, I don't know where the biplane comes from and why we have a biplane. Maybe the Scooby-Doo fans can tell me why we have this. I don't know. Now, the Ultimate Fate was the same as the Mystery Machine from uh, Round 2. These are going to get in my kids' hands. They're built and play, so they're going to get played with. I'm probably going to hold back the figures for a while. I want to see how they hold up to being played. So there will be a later installment showing what happens. I suspect this biplane isn't going to hold up very well. Uh, the Mystery Machine might, but this I don't think is going to. It does say for six and older, Miri is six, so there you go. When you open the box, there's the wings. Everything's pre-painted, so you don't have to paint anything. And let's get all the rest of that out. It's fairly good size, which doesn't surprise me if it's the same scale. Oh, the Scooby comes out real easy and part of him goes flying away. It's the same scale as a mystery machine, so it shouldn't surprise me. Okay? And I got half a mind, maybe not to let the kids play with these and put them in a display case because I did grow up watching Scooby Doo and I liked Scooby Doo. They look decent when they're done. I mean, if you wanted to make them a model kit and do them right, you could. It wouldn't take too much work with the mystery machine. And I know in the past, I've not been, it looks like this has been open before. <laughs> Look at those directions. There's someone just didn't care about them. <laughs> Shoved them in there who was assembling this. Um, I know I'm not a fan of some of the Revel kits. The Revel Star Wars kits. Revel cheapened out really harsh with those. If you get any of their aircraft kits, tank kits, or car kits, they're good. I've, I've gone through some of the Revel automobile kits, and they are excellent kits. So, it just hit and miss on what you grab for Revel, on what it is. Star Wars, they shouldn't have done what they did, in my opinion. Some of you are like, yeah, but they're toys. Maybe. Maybe they should have done the toys and done the serious stuff. They tried. They got some of um, Fine Mold's kits and repopped them. So, they did try. But, no. Th this, this isn't bad. Well, the Mission Machine isn't bad. I'll get it in a minute. So, looking at the directions... It looks like this is going to go together fairly easily. The mission machine didn't take very long. And inside here we have stickers. I don't know if that's all the stickers we have. Remember the mission machine, the stickers were inside the directions too. It looks like the wings are multi-pieces and there is something of an engine. And it has machine guns. Okay. Which is fun. Yeah, the phone decides to ring when I'm doing this. I'm not answering it. I don't know who it is. I won't answer if I don't know who it is. And yeah, it looks pretty straightforward to putting it together. And you look down here, the figures go together the same way they did. They feel like Lego. Let's get everything opened up and let's see what we have inside the packages. Okay, I still have my little hobby knife here. I actually bought a new hobby knife. I don't know what happened to the new one. Oh, I know where it is. It's downstairs. So we have the biplane pieces there. I'm going to open Velma and Shaggy separate and put them together separate. This is, well, I just don't want to lose any piece of them. There's the struts and the propeller. That might actually move some air if it's spinning fast enough. I don't think it'll move too much. It's not designed to move much, that's for sure. And this isn't a kit where you're going to have to worry about numbered parts or something because there isn't that many. And I wouldn't expect grand detail. I mean, look at the engine. There is some detail there, but that's not what this is designed to be. Okay? And some of you are probably thinking, you were, my long-term subscribers, you were overly harsh on the Star Wars kit. No, I was not. This is supposed to be a cartoon kit. 
and cartoony. So looking cartoony is fine. It's what it's supposed to be. If they go above and beyond that, then win for everyone. And we got this over here. So the only directions are for the cockpit controls, which are surprising to me a little bit. Yeah, remember the um, Mystery Machine, and I'm looking for the directions on it, and I see them. Mystery Machine had a sticker guide on the back page, right here, okay? This doesn't have a sticker guide, so yeah, the only stickers we have are these. And these are not those uh, vinyl stickers that will hold up really well to wear and tear, if, as long as you don't try to peel them off. So it's not those. So we have the parts list. Uh, I'm assuming they're all there, so I'm not going to look. And if they're not, well, we'll start digging through them. So let's get going. Parts are easy to identify. This is the bottom. And we want the front of the engine. And somehow I don't think that's what I'm looking for. This is what I'm looking for. And it looks like it has some pins to it, but I don't know. I know there's a notch to it. It doesn't show which way the notch goes, which is some weirdness. It does show it goes in here, and yeah, it's, it's going to snap in pretty tight, and it's not going to move around much once I get it in there. I'm just trying to figure out which way it actually goes because there's a pin. And there's no real pin on the parts so maybe you just stick it in there I don't know this is the one thing I don't like about this right now no it doesn't have anything and there is some alignment to it so I am not going to push it down in there too tight right now it does fit tight like you would hope and again, there is this slot right here, but I don't see a notch anywhere. Maybe I'm blind. Let me get some cheaters. And we'll take a look. Trouble right at the beginning is not good. No, I see no notches. All right, so hopefully I can turn it if I have it wrong. But I don't really think it's going to matter because I know this part's what goes in here. And it has so many orientations to it. That, well, it's not even going to go in there. But it has a lot of orientations to it. Maybe I'm putting this in wrong. Nope, doesn't look that way. Okay. So this will be... Ah, oh, there it goes. So, yeah, I don't think it matters which way I put it. So I'm just going to stick it in there for now. The next part is putting the wings together. Okay. So I have to find the wings that have the pins going up, this. The wing that's going up, I use one of these parts on it. And this part just goes in like this, it snaps in. Do I have one of these right? Are they marked? All these identical? I think they're all identical. It would be funny if they're not. <laughs> Yeah, they're all identical, and it does not look like... No, they're not 100% identical. One end is slightly different than the others. On this one, anyhow. These three don't appear to be that way. All is not boating well in Scooby Land. That's not fitting in really tight, and I don't like it. Okay? I really don't like it. Well, anyhow, you take this part and it goes here. As you break it. There we go. There was a snap. I like hearing snaps when I'm putting together model kits. And then it goes in here, thusly. Now that snaps in pretty tight. I like this engine cowling in the front. Not the cowling, the engine. Okay, that snaps in really tight. And then we get this other one. We put this in here. And I get the feeling the wings don't have backs on them. So they're going to look kind of funky from the underside. This one's not going to be a mystery machine. 
the feeling. The mission machine went together really well, really quick. I'm not vibing this one. There it goes. Probably should have made the flaps non-movable. It probably would have been a little bit better. So this one goes up here like this. The only good thing about this is it only goes in one way. Uh-oh. I hear kids not behaving. I probably ought to go help. Wow, this one goes on really tight. And I'm having to put some force on it to get it in there. Just took that out. Probably they need to eat or nap. There we go. Got it on there. It's a little loose. I'd like to see it on there a little bit better. I don't think it's going to come apart once you get it together, though. It doesn't feel like that is going to come apart. So we're done with step three at this point. Step four is put the tail fin on, which sticks out pretty well. And it's keyed, so it only goes on one way. It looks like a key. Literally, it looks like a keyhole. And it's going to go on here. sitting in the keyhole. I want to take this down and push on it some. There we go. It's in there. So we got the tail fin on. Then we put the top on this. I get the feeling this thing is going to fit tight. And it does fit tight. I feel like getting my vice out and vice gripping it to get this to close up. How are the gaps closing up? Not well. So if you were to take and want to paint this and do it right, you're going to have to do a lot of work to get this gap to seal up tightly. Because it don't want to seal up tightly. I'm squeezing. I'm about to put it in the vise and squeeze it down real tight it wouldn't take much to squeeze this in the vise I noticed I knocked a piece on the floor yeah there it is it's not a major piece it's one of the wing braces which I'm going to need in a minute okay so that goes on like that and again you can see there is some gaps in places along here it's not going on the way I would like i am got really half a mind to put a vise to it so the vise is sitting right next to me and, you know, this wasn't, like, the most expensive thing in the world. So, what have I got to lose, right? Let's put some vice action in here. She's getting viced. I hear the plastic creaking. But it's not changing it. It's not... Yeah, it's not going together any better. All right, so that was an attempt, and it's done. We're not going to attempt it anymore. How long this is going to hold up to play, we'll see if I do give it to him. It depends on what it looks like when it's done. It's fairly large, though. It's a little bit surprising. Now we got to put the cockpits in, but before you put the cockpits in, you put the stickers in, okay? And we have two different cockpits. They look to be identical right here. And if you look... Here's the stickers. One of the things I don't like about stickers is peeling them off. It's always a challenge to peel stickers free. Always a challenge. Um, I'm looking for tweezers. Yeah, I put them in the dollar store rack that's not functional right now. Well, it didn't hold the tweezers. The tweezers are too big. And it really doesn't matter which one goes where because they're identical. They're supposed to go across the top up here. And I don't like putting stickers on things because stickers can be quite the challenge to put down. They're not forgiving like water slide decals. Water slide, the key word there is slide. They slide. And stickers do not slide, they stick. 
and you see I'm having trouble with it. Half the time I just have to resort to using my fingers to get them on. Uh, that's as good as that one's going to get. It's actually not too bad. And these cockpits just go in like that. And they fit in there pretty tight. It's kind of a good thing. Hopefully I'm not putting that one in the wrong spot. Looks like I might have. Yeah, they actually might be keyed. Yep, they are keyed. We have one slot on the back of this one. This one had multiple slots. So they only go in, each one goes in a certain hole. So be careful of that. We have one slot here and this one had two or three. Let me get the sticker for this one. I am running out of time for this video. That's one of the things my life has not allowed me is a lot in the way of free time. So I've made little no progress on the Blade Liger, not Blade Liger, Panther Liger, and on Char Zaku's. Been little or no progress done in a month. I'm barely finding time to do this after a month. But they're building plan. I expect them not to take 40 minutes to build. There we go. We got the cockpits in, so we got that step done. Probably put this thing together without directions, but I'm being cheesy and putting them together with directions. That's going to spin in there. I don't think there's any way of tightening that up. There's no notch. The notch is there, but there's no notch in the corresponding plastic. Okay, up next are the guns. The guns go here in the front like this. And nib mark, yay! That would need cleanup if I was going to paint this thing. And the guns are pretty horrible. They need holes drilled on the sides of them for the cooling. And we put the cow wing on the front. Here's the cow wing. And it looks like it goes any which way you can put it on there. And it's on there. Okay. And you could move that engine around if you have to. Nah, not with the cowing on there. It won't let you. But if you're uptight and you want that engine aligned perfectly up and down, for real life, I don't think that matters. And there might be some reason for it. But there we go. There. Now it's up and down. All right. Now, up next is the propeller. And there is a front or back to the propeller. We have a snap peg on this so it can spin. I guess you can spin it as you fly this thing around the house and do some vroom vrooms or some pew pews. And it's going to snap in here. All right, so there we got the pew pew on there and the propeller. Now we do the other wings. We'll put these on. And the trick to putting these in is to put them in one side and then push it in the other until it snaps. That one went in well. So put it in one side, push it in until it snaps. There we go. That one's in. Then you're supposed to put these two together. This one's on the top, this one's on the bottom from the looks of it. But that doesn't work, so they have to go this way. Okay. So the directions were, oh, I see what they're doing, they're holding it, yeah, anyhow, it goes this way. So we're on step 10 now, step 10 is to put all these things together, okay, and they go on to this, you start them on this, and you have this one, this one, this one goes here, and I wonder if it's coated. You have uh, different sized pins, so it is coded which way it goes, which is good because you could do, most certainly put that backwards. Okay, and then there's two of these, and it looks like they lean towards the back. I wonder if you can put them in upside down. Probably not. Let me try to put it in upside down. Nope, you can't put them in upside down. Now, these are these are a rubbery material. They're not the same plastic as this. So you'd have to use like epoxy or something to glue it if you decide to glue it. And the part that goes on the top is curved like the wing, so you'll know which way it goes in. The wings, uh, second a kid plays with it, these wings are coming off. They're just not gonna snap together real tightly. And then you put the wings on the top.
Now, they might snap together on the bottom real tight. No, they're not. They're not real tight anywhere. So this just got destroyed as build and play unless your kid is nice to their toys. At this point, I don't like it as build and play. We have a nice gap up here on the top of the wing. Could be taken care of with some glue, but we need putty work if you're a model builder. And a lot of sanding to get that to smooth out because that gap is just a little on the forg unforgivable side of things. It's big. And it just does not settle down. Okay. Then we turn it over and we're going to put the landing wheel, landing gear together. So here's the landing gear rig. And we have two wheels that snap on. And they roll. And again, the pegs are sized, the big ones in the back, the small ones in the front. And they're in there. And then we have the tail wheel, which goes in here. So she's got her landing gear now. And somewhere, someplace, I missed putting the, this in. I don't know where I missed it, but I missed it. <laughs> Apparently it goes in there like that. So it can turn, but this can't turn. You can turn this like a real plane. All right, there's the plane. It has some issues as a model kit. Namely, the gap line between the top and bottom fuselage. And the real big one is here. Okay, so the real big one's up at the top on the top of that wing. I'm sure with some clamps and some glue, you could get that to lay down right. It feels like it might be styrene, so you're probably okay gluing it. But you're still going to have a nasty seam to deal with across the front and across the top of this wing. They did try to gap it along here, but there's a gap there and not here. So, I don't know. It might have been better for them to have done one solid wing. But that would have driven the cost up. Let's put together Velma. I don't know how all of you feel. I liked Velma better than Daphne. It was just me. Okay, like Daphne and Fred and Scooby on the other one, they are kind of the vinyl-y material. And these arms go in kind of weird. Okay? And they feel like they're Lego figures when you're putting them together. And I don't know how long these arms will stay in if you got a rambunctious kid playing with it. Okay, so there's Velma. Let's put her up where everyone can see Velma. Face is better on Velma than it is on Daphne. I'm surprising. Let's see Shaggy. Our every hungry Shaggy. Just what do they put in those Scooby snacks anyhow? Why is he always hungry and why does he always want them? Scooby I get, they're Scooby snacks. Shaggy? I don't know about Shaggy. And the next question is, what's front for Shaggy? Ah, uh, well, you can't tell. <laughs> this should be front, so let's put his feet facing this way. Oh, he's got a look at that neck on this guy. And again, the face is better on Shaggy than it is on Daphne. He's got a neck on him, too. There we go. Got a big old long neck. Look at the arms on him, too. Wow. Here's, here, look at these arms compared to Velma. He can reach out and slap the silly out of someone with these arms. I don't know why he's always scared of the monsters. Because these arms could reach halfway across the room and slap someone. Get some torque on those arms, they're so long. Really put some hurt on someone. There you go. We got our Shaggy. I was disappointed he wasn't in the other kit, but here he is. Not the best of figures. If you really wanted to, you would need to... The face isn't bad, but your figure painters would repaint him, and this would have to be fixed. Now let's look at Scooby. This is a different Scooby than the one that came with the um, Mystery Machine. Just a little bit different, because he's got a pilot kind of helmet thingy. Okay, so here's Scooby's body. Put that on there. 
And I like this Scooby. He's got good expression on his face. Okay. And let's put these legs on him. I still hear kids yelling. Let's put these legs on him. And I need to be done with this like 10 minutes ago. And it's such is my life. I never have any free time for much. All right. So there's Scooby. Okay. It's a lot like the other Scooby. I don't think the other Scooby has the uh, spots on him up here. The helmet. Put him in the plane. Well, he's sitting in the plane. Yeah, his head bends enough that he can sit in the plane. See? Scooby can actually sit in the plane. He doesn't sit real well, but he can. What about this long, shaggy thing with these arms that could reach across the universe and slap someone? <sighs> Colonel Lock on was what was coming to mind there. Anyhow, talking about going across the universe. Anyhow, what do I think of this? It's not bad. It's not great. I mean, if you want a model kit for Scooby Doo, the Mystery Machine is definitely better. Because you don't have those line. Uh, look. Let's take a look. The only real trouble with the Mystery Machine is this part right here. Why they left that notch on there, I don't know. To pry the roof open, but they didn't need to leave that notch. Everything went together really well on the Mystery Machine. They did a good job on this. I want Daphne's kicking Fred in the face. I don't know if you can see it in there, but she's kicking Fred. So let's get out the Scoobies and compare the two Scoobies. Oh, he does have the spots on him there. You see? They do have the spots. Not 100% identical, but pretty close. Alright, well there you go. We are done looking at Scooby-Doo, the Mystery Machine. Here's Daphne and Velma together. And again, you can see why I like Velma's face better than Daphne's right there. And let's look at Fred. Fred came apart. Not good Fred. And look at Fred. There you go. Both of them together. Just dump them in there. Velma gets to go in the Mystery Machine now. A little pile on the back of it, I guess. And put it back together. I like the Mystery Machine. That, that gets good points, but this biplane... A little on the bad side. All right, have a good one. Hope you all enjoy.